all that kind of stuff. It helps an awful lot. And if you would, uh, if you think of it, uh, maybe go to, you know, on your iTunes or wherever you listen. Uh, is iTunes a thing? No, maybe Apple. And uh, maybe give us a review and a, and a star rating. Um, I know people always ask for five stars, but you can be honest. If you think it's only a three, that's all right. Maybe tell us why you think it's only three and how we can improve. And that would obviously help too. Uh, thank you very much for to Lisa Martin for joining us last week for our third annual uh, Halloween special. Pretty mad that it's our third in the, the how long we've been going for. And even when I write the numbers down with regards to episodes, it's it's mad to think this is 144th. Uh, Lisa joined us. Uh, she's a Halloween, a Halloween expert, if you haven't listened. Um, and we talked about her, her writing uh, career in fiction and non-fiction and I read her book about uh, the history of seances and it was fascinating and how far all of this kind of goes back to necromancy kind of thing goes back to uh, the Romans and the Greeks and how they used to um, you know when people read you know tea leaves and read fortunes and stuff well they used to use people's entrails to uh, predict the future Um I suppose if you're doing that now, your future would be in prison. But uh, they they used to do it and and uh, in a quite barbaric way, but you know, different times. Uh, but it was it was brilliant. She talked about she talked about ghosts and sounds. Uh, not sounds, it's obviously mediums and ghost hunters and all this kind of stuff that was great. Uh, and she was really good to join us. Um, for her it was at half eight in the morning. For me, it was half four because she's over there in Los Angeles. So, uh, yeah, it was a great chat. I wanted to do a solo one today. I, I was kind of. You know, it's it's a it's a weird kind of thing, dating apps. So I wanted to talk a bit about that because I've been on that rocky terrain a few times, and I want to talk about diets because I've changed up my uh, it's not so much a diet I'm on, but I've changed up my eating plan for for different reasons, and I want to kind of talk a bit about that and some stuff I found out in the last few weeks that was really fascinating stuff that I didn't know, and uh, going through uh, some hypno uh, therapy work with regards to it as well which is all part of the of the deal um so i thought i'd be interested to cover these two things and you know particularly dating and dating apps because ah it's a weird world the whole thing you know we've all had to do it not all had to do dating apps obviously because they are relatively new thing but we've all had to do the whole dating thing and that how we've got to where we are and where we stand and, and all that kind of stuff and how the world has changed with regards to that. And, you know, when I t I'll be talking to my guests next week, well, hopefully uh, it works out and um, we'll be talking about maybe his ideas of, of, of writing about dating apps and dating in the future and, uh, you know, in the near future in, in kind of a, a science, science fiction-y kind of way, the way he writes his, his story. So, I'll be talking about that. So that'll be interesting to kind of follow on from this. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, I'm 40 years of age. Uh, so I did grow up without the the dating app thing going on. And uh, uh, meeting people in, for me, was, you know, my dating history before that was meeting people in... Uh, in pubs or or even at work is kind of you know when you're young you usually work at like a a supermarket or in a factory or, or something like that and obviously there's lots of uh people uh different people who you work with and uh of your age group and there's nights out and things happen and you know you know all the usual stuff and that was all great and probably Oh, like it's it's very easy in in hindsight, I guess, to think that that was an easier way of meeting people. But it depends on who you are and how you are, your confidence and how you feel your self worth is, and um, can you approach people in that way? Of course, of course, yeah. You go and meet people in pubs, uh, you have a few drinks and you're a little bit braver about approaching people, um, and that works too, and it works well for people, and not everybody's out for the same reason. Um, you know, much as they are on dating apps, people are out there to either, you know, hook up with people, a very American phrase, or, uh, you know, looking to meet someone long term and uh, all the stuff that we're expected to do. I say expected in inverted commas, but, you know, expected to have kids and get married and all that stuff. And I'm not even sure that that is still a. Uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a thing that we're expected to do, it's, it's more of a. 
Well, I guess it is for some people. I don't know. I don't know if it is for me, um, but maybe I'm just speaking because of the position I'm in. So it's different to speak of it that way. But anyway, so my, when I was going on dating apps for the first time, I very much was, um, this was post uh, breakdown. So um, I wasn't drinking anymore and I was uh, quite anxious. Um, and the idea of chatting to people on a online and on a computer or on your phone or whatever was far easier than the idea of going out and you know trying to casually approach someone and try to make look like you're cool and you're you're in control of the situation because that's what wasn't the way. So I was on an, on an app. The I remember the first app that I went on was called Plenty of Fish, and I I remember it being, um, sorry, what was it? Yeah, it was Plenty of Fish, and and for for that you could you could contact people there was another app i think it was called another friend or something i can't really remember what it was called now to be honest but that was one where unless you paid the subscription fee or whatever they called it you couldn't like give any information they they'd block it so if you try to cleverly type in like a sentence or two and leave in your, your digits of, the digits of your phone number in between some of the letters they'd spot that and they'd block it and that wouldn't get through to the person. So it was kind of, they were snookering into a situation where if you were chatting to someone for a couple of days and you were kind of really getting on, you would have to sign up to the, the, the you know, pay whatever it was, 25 euro or whatever for a, a month. And uh, and that way you'd be able to get the, the information. So I think Plenty of Fish gave an opportunity to be able to give the information. Um, now, I don't know how the economics of how a dating app works. I know they have a lot of, advertising on their pages and stuff and obviously they're getting paid for that but I don't know how well they're getting paid for that but that seemed the better option but I remember meeting someone on the other one they the uh, another friend or I think that's what it was called but um and I actually paid the 25 euro because I thought well no this is it this is it you know what I mean like you know we're all of this we've all been at that point we're like yeah this is this is the one now so I'm gonna I'm going to fork out this 25 euro and that'll be that. And look, to be fair, the funny thing is, you know, I actually did date that person for a little while and they were great. Um, But it was a long distance one. So uh, sometimes for me, getting on a train is like an awful thing to do. Not so much now, to be fair. I've, I've become a little bit better at that. But at the time, it was terrible. So I used to, I remember I used to go down and, I'd be listening to the to at the time I was really enjoying an album by the National. I can't remember quite what it was called, but um, I used to listen to that all the time. So when I listen to it now, it's like one of those things, you know. Those memory music is great for that, for reminding of like going down that train and getting there and and meeting that person and stuff. But it, like I say, it just didn't work out because it was very much uh, just the, the two of us traveling up a back, and it, you know, you can't rely on one person, so. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out. You know, but it wasn't the only reason. I mean, you know, we 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 were we weren't we were what, late. I was late twenties anyway, and I had a bit of cop on to think that like it wasn't going to be the 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 one, and and I have no doubt that she was thinking the exact same thing. So that was my first opportunity to kind of uh, meet someone off those apps, like, and you know, I can't remember. I can remember the first date with that person, but I can't really remember how I felt, but I imagine it was pretty, you know, nervous and like a nervous wreck. And I think, I wonder if you can kind of have the same response on a first date when you meet someone and you, you're just immediately thinking, no, this is going well. It's like, you know, the, the, that's the way I go to it. Like, it's like, uh, first of all, you meet them, you're like, oh, these seem very nice. Yeah, they're very pretty, all that kind of stuff. And then within 10 minutes, you're already going, no, this isn't going well. No. And it might be going like, they could be thinking the exact same thing. They could be thinking the exact opposite thing. And it's almost as if you're trying to soften a blow. Like if they, if the, um, if it doesn't work out, I remember meeting someone here in Athlone again, this is years ago. And um, I met them on, on, on an app and I was like, uh, I didn't realize this till about three years later, but what happened on that was, I was there with them and uh, we were having just a cup of tea, like, you know, it was during the day. And uh, I remember her phone ringing and she said, oh, my friend is this, 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 I have to go. And I was like, oh, right. Because oh, it sounded like an, like an emergency or whatever, like, you know. Um, 
And I realized, well, I think I realized, I hope I'm not being mean, this person could have been an emergency. But, but after like three years when I heard about this more and more, that it was one of those calls that you get your friend. This is, look, again, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, but you, what happens is you get your friend, you say to them, right, give us a ring after, like, give us, if we're meeting up at two, give us a ring at half two. If everything's going all right, I'll say such and such and I'll be grand. But if everything's going wrong, I'll react to what you're saying and I can get out of here. And that's what it was. But like, you know, obviously in my, um, and again, it could be har being harsh. I don't think it was, but in my innocence, I think, um, I think that's what happened. But, but, uh, but that's, look, that's all right. I've never done it, but like, you know, if you feel that something's not going right and uh, 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 look, and it could be even worse than that. If you feel that you were in, danger or something if you thought this this person is dodgy because there is that element of danger meeting someone for the first time off dating apps that is a good system to have if you need to get out of there you know so she wasn't obviously in danger but you know she was obviously bored or something um i don't I, like so I, yeah sometimes i do feel quite I, I feel less nervous now when i meet someone for the first time and i i think now, this is something that my mom told me about a while ago. And, and, you know, it's one of those things that you do get with age. You feel le you feel more, I don't know, less insecure or more secure, I suppose, are the same things. But I think if someone says to you, um, you know, if, if someone to say to you after a couple of dates or like they're not into it, I think you feel, oh, well, fair enough, you know. And I think if th that goes for first dates as well, that if you think, I go into it thinking, well, if they don't like me, they don't like me. I'm not going to change now. Like I'm, it's too, it's too late for that kind of behavior. So there's another thing about apps, which are, I don't know if, if someone, if the people who listen to this, who have been on them and, and experienced like something like Tinder, which is probably the, the most famous one, um, the swipe thing. So if have, people don't know about it, like you swipe, um, I think it's like swipe right for yes and swipe left for no. And I think there's a guilty thing to that as well. I think I find anyway, because you're basing it mostly on the picture. Now you can go in and look at their, their information, but sometimes their information is slight. Like when I set that up, I'm not on, by the way, I'm not on any dating apps now, but, um, but it wasn't long ago that I was, but I just will talk about it. But um, yeah, I think, you can look at a bit of their information, but I didn't put a lot of information on mine. Like, you know, I just put like, you know, what I do and you know, my interests and some very slim, uh, you know, bio. And it's kind of sad that we're, we're actually doing that, you know, um, the swipe thing. I suppose we do that on the street though. Don't we like are in a, in a pub where if we see someone and we're like, no, I wouldn't be attracted to him. Oh, they're attractive. But you do it in your head. But it seems when you're doing it like as an actual physical act of like swiping with your finger to the left or right, it's a bit, it's a bit, because we shouldn't, like, we're not supposed to, at least we're taught not to judge a book for a cover or we should get to know a person before we judge them. And we, what we do is we just swipe them away, like, um, swat them like a fly, almost like they're gone, then they don't come back. Um, you've chosen that they're not good looking enough for you or something. Um, or not even that, like, it's just like, you're not interested in them. It doesn't have to be as cruel as like, they're not good looking enough, but it's a, there's a thing that I don't like about that that much. And, and that's what you do. You just, if you're on there, that's the, that's what you get into. You get into the whole mindset of just swatting people away. Um, and when you go on it for the first time, you do get like this little bit of a buzz because what happens is, you're immediately swiped right by a group of people, like because you know that's just the way that the it works, and you think like, oh, I got thirty likes in a day, you know. But you have to match with those people in order to chat with them, if you know what I mean. So, and sometimes they don't come around, you know. So you're thinking, did thirty people like me, or is this Tinder's little way of trying to keep me on there by saying, oh, you're such a hot property around here. Uh, that uh, look at all these people who like you and um, it's that yeah it's it's a weird but like another you know when you do start talking to people and you, look everybody's on there and they talk to a few people like you know you eventually if you like someone you obviously whittle it down to that person and that's the person you you talk to and might be you might trade numbers or whatever but this this starting the same thing over and over again is just 
dull as anything in in the sense that you give your name, well, your name's there. What do you do? What music do you like? Are you into sport? Do you train much? You know, all that kind of stuff. And it's and if that conversation like falls apart or goes nowhere, it goes back to the same thing. Because there has to be like, you know, a base of uh, uh, like a base level conversation for you to kind of pull threads out of to to discuss, you know. And so it has to start somewhere. You just you don't just jump in and say, you know, um, did you hear that podcast be such and such? It's not it's not really the way it works. So it's the same stuff over and over again, unless you're very lucky. And the first person you talk to is very sound and, you know, uh, it just flies. and The conversation seems to go really well. Um, but if, unless you love, if you're a bit of a narcissist and you love chatting about yourself, you get bored of it very fast and the likes begin to slow down and you never seem to match with anyone. So you're wondering where are all these people that I, 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 um, supposedly liked me. Um, and sometimes you do match with people and you just don't talk to, <laughs> talk to the person. So that's a weird thing as well. It's like, uh, you'll have like five or six matches and you don't talk to any of them. So they're just sitting there as if you're all sitting around the table but you're not speaking um and, pe- and like maybe maybe people are just waiting for the other to 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 start the conversation and both of you are doing the same thing and that's the there's a good thing about there's another one called bumble which is a good format it's uh i think it's i think it's a slightly better idea in that you it's the same thing you know you have that horrible situation where you have to swipe 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 but you eventually uh, you know match up with people um but the woman has to start the conversation first. Like, you know, what? look, I'm going, but by the way, I'm going by a, a, a relationship that I would be looking for a man and woman, obviously. So it's not, you know, it's different for, for different relationship types. But for me, it would be like, I'd be waiting for the woman to, to start the conversation. And I, and I don't know why, but I think that's just, I don't know. I think that's better because I do think, and I've like talked to people on these dating apps that there's a men or there's a lot of men that are creeps on there, you know, and they're, they're, they send like you know weird stuff as you can imagine. I'm not gonna go into it, but you you've we've all heard the stories. But you know that's not an environment that uh, an app or a, a company I should say uh, should be promoting. You know, so Bumble has a little bit of a better idea that the the woman uh, matches first, so maybe has to listen listen to less nonsense. So I've been on that. I think it's again. I think it's a slightly better idea. Um, does it work any better? Probably not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, look, we'll get into it a bit more, but for now, I better read out the old, the old trusty advert. Um, so fusion training center, Monksland at Lone, a place to train in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts, and CrossFit, a great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at fusion training center. Oh yeah, that's right. Or drop in for a chat. Fusion training center, train like a warrior. Okay. I'll just get a quick drink. So, so with the dates, I think a lot of the time you tend to to chat to people who aren't from the same place. You know, like I, I've like from the few times, like I've been on, like I said, I started going on them when I was like in my late twenties. So I've been on them a number of times, and uh, there hasn't been many people from Athlone that I've talked to, you know, or met up with and stuff. And that's, that's the problem. I think is that sometimes you, you might be really into someone and be chatting away uh, uh, and they might be in, you know, just say Tipperary, for example, and there's not, you know, the, like you're not gonna, unless you're really into them and you you have the money to do it and all that kind of stuff, you can travel up and down and you have the time off and your schedules run in sync and things like that. Like it's, it's very difficult to keep something like that going. And I think every time I saw that in the last maybe five, six years, um, I just thought like, is that, am I just doing the same thing over and over again where I'm, meeting someone that's not from here, like say they're from Dublin or Limerick or Tipperary, whatever. And I'm kind of, at the time, I'm hopeful that will work, but I am I know like it won't, you know, because it's not, because again, 
schedules are one thing. My we all know, or most people listening to this will know that my uh, my routines are pretty solid and and uh, they need to be for myself. Um, although I'm getting a bit better at, at kind of loosening up a little, but not much. And I think it's very difficult to kind of get get up, summon up the energy to kind of go at it over and over, no matter how you like the person. And it's just, it, it they are kind of difficult in that way. Like I say, I like I obviously I don't drive. That's one thing actually that I've been shot down in flames for a few times. The fact that I don't drive, and and that's I've I remember one person told me that uh they had I think she I think she had a kid or uh, a couple of kids and uh, it was just like um. Oh no, you'd just be another hassle. I was like, oh, well, probably probably could have worked that a bit better. But like I understand, you know, it's just uh, it was a, a strange way of putting it. But she's right, you know, that that they're all those kind of situations are just they're they're very difficult, like, you know. And like I wonder for the people listening that you know, how who have been on uh, on these apps and and they've worked for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have met up and you know, been in solid relationships or got married or had kids and all that stuff. Obviously, it does work, and you, you you're going to get those kind of situations. But I think most people are just kind of plugging away, and I think everybody who's on there seems to just hate being on there. It's you know, but but everybody has the same idea. It's it's always like, well, where else are you going to do it? And that's the thing. Where else are you going to do it? It's not a you know, especially over the last two years of what, what happened with uh, you know COVID nineteen stuff like that. So that that was one thing that was stopping it, and then you know there's still that kind of thing hanging in the air and people are people think differently about you know going to these places and meeting up the way they do and particularly people my, in my age group obviously for for people in their 20s or, or younger even they're you know they're just out there like i guess i used to be out there or, or people my age used to be out there so but but it, you know i don't know what it is for younger people on dating apps i don't know if they even use them uh, i'm sure some people do but Obviously, when you go on them, you pick the age group that you would um, like to date in. You know what I mean? That kind of like, say it was between 35, 45, whatever it is for your age. Uh, so that's all that's shown to you. So I don't know, like if younger people use them at all, really. Um, but a lot of people say Tinder now is just a place to kind of, you know, um, get one night stands off. So maybe that is a, a, a thing for younger people. And if that's what they're up to, you know, fair play that's what they like but if you if you um if you've had any good experiences or any pr particularly horrendous experiences maybe you could share them on our on our not you don't have to do them on you know on the page or whatever where, where everybody can see them but you could send them to us and uh obviously everything would be anonymous we wouldn't do that but it's just more for the crack to see if anything funny happened or if anybody's done that whole thing of ringing people um uh, to escape a date with somebody um that might be uh, something to add in at one point in another episode um but yeah i know i know people who have been on the apps and stuff and they seem to be across the board where people have the same ideas of them and uh, the, the the responses are always the same like where else are we going to meet people like you know um or people don't get approached you know some of the some of the women I've talked to on the app saying they don't get approached in pubs and and nightclubs. So, what's going on there, lads? You know, if you wanna like you know step up a bit, uh, sort yourselves out. But yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of talk about that. Obviously, I wasn't gonna give a huge history of my own dating life. I was in love once, and it was back when I was like nineteen, and uh, that's a long time ago. Uh, so, but uh, you know, obviously, I've been very keen on people uh, since then, but. The, no love because I think if you like experience it um, the first time you don't you, you understand what it is I don't think I, I don't think it would go by without you noticing if you're with someone and you're in love with them um, I don't think you go by without noticing so uh, but for now if anybody is interested I am off the apps so that's you know and I, I, I don't know if I want to go on again and like you know whatever happens happens one of those things like that it's just exhausting work to be honest uh talking with yourself like i said over and over again is the worst part of it uh the part of it of of just swiping people to the left just by going by their looks or, or, or what they say in their their profile is, is not really of interest to me so for now i'm happy to be not on there and just going about my day i think that's enough but what we're doing there's another thing that we're doing at the moment, like I've said about, like, it's obviously this episode's called Dating Apps and Diets. 
because I like the alliterative uh, dating and diets thing, and I've done that in a few episodes. But it, this is this is what we're doing at the moment. It's it's um it's a twelve week nutrition course, right? So this isn't uh, an advertisement for. Well, I've already done the advertisement for the gym, so I I couldn't be advertised again. But this was a that an idea that Martin was talking about. So what what we were trying to do, what we're trying to do with it is, there's three parts of it. So there's, um, training, you know, so exercise part. You've got the the food part, the nutrition part, and then you've got the mindset part. So that was kind of the, uh, I guess the interesting thing for me, because I was stuck in a bit of a rut, but I was still training and I was eating uh, what I thought was, you know, uh, the right amount of food for the day and stuff like that. Um, But the mindset part was quite difficult. And this is where I kind of got interested in the last few weeks. So the first, um, first the, the, our, uh, I should say, my therapist's name is John. So, so what happened was, we all met up in the gym on the first day on a Saturday. So there's 12 of us doing the course. Um, and, you know, a mixture of, you know, uh, men and women and a mixture of age uh, age groups as well. So um, we we were in on the mats. So obviously we were lying down. So we were just lying on the CrossFit floor. So we were lying on the mats where we do uh, the MMA. And John was just like talking us through. Um, you know, it's a re- it was a relaxation session, so you know, not full on um hypnotherapy, just but just to get us into a um the mindset. So I remember we were lying there, right? And this only took about half an hour, but uh, it was about two o'clock in the day. Not the best time for me because a lot of the time I feel a bit tired at that time, and I don't know if it's because that's when all the medication I take hits and. You know, just everything is kind of caught up in this world. And I do tend to try and avoid sleep, but, it, you know, um, I didn't that day, put it this. So I was listening to John's voice. So I was like feeling quite comfortable and relaxed. And I was next to Keen, who's who's my buddy. And, and he's been on the show and he's one of the coaches as well as myself in, in uh, Fusion. And uh, I was listening to John's voice and then John's voice was drifting away. And then it was coming back and it was drifting away. And so when he said open your eyes i thought like that that was the whole point like the voice would just drift away and come back and you know you were in deeper relaxation and i remember he said at the start of it that there was kids next door and there's a gymnastics place next door so you can hear all the kids like laughing and screaming and all that and he said don't worry about the noise you're not going to hear it so like when i woke up i thought well yeah I, i didn't hear the noise like that like he was right about that so i thought that that meant we wouldn't hear that noise or hear john's voice eventually but uh, Keen just turned around to me and he says, "You were snoring, man." And I was like, "Oh shit, I fell asleep." And then Martin, who was at the other end of the mat, said, "Oh, Keen, you fell asleep." And then I obviously thought I better own up straight away here because Keen sound like that, like he probably just laugh or whatever. But I said, "No, that was me." So well, everybody else was kind of looking and laughing at me at that point because they had obviously heard me snoring, you know. Um, but yeah, I just I went up to John afterwards and I was like, uh, "Sorry about that, John," because I thought it was disrespectful or something. But he was like. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, I've clients have fall asleep a lot of the time because they're so relaxed. It's not a bad thing. So I felt the guilt kind of left me then. So that was fine. And and because I knew everyone on the mat, you know, I wasn't I'd if that was a situation where I didn't know people, I'd be really embarrassed. But I yeah, look, I wasn't. They didn't really care that that was funny, lighten the mood, all that stuff. So it's fine, right? So 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 you have to blow my nose. I mean, you probably people who listen to this podcast know that I have to blow my nose all the time, especially on solo ones, because I never shut up talking. Well, that's the whole point. So do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mute it for this second because nobody needs to hear. No, I'm back. So um the the kind of thing that I talk about with Martin a bit uh, uh, before this and and with a couple of my friends and a couple of people, nutritionists who've come on here about diet being kind of a dirty word. And, you know, this isn't the way I, uh, in my experience of diet, see it as people who are trying to lose weight. So they're on a diet, right? So that that's just in my head. And I don't know if it's the same for you, but um, to me, this, so I had to remove this as, as thinking of it as a diet, because I think I might be wrong in this, but I think I'm the only one on, on the 12 that's, that's not trying to lose weight, that they're trying to, um, improve their performance by eating better. That's basically what I want to do. Um, so I was like to just describing it as a nutrition plan, but other people may be describing it as a diet, and you know, other people describe it as something else. So when I went into uh, 
when I went into Martin for the first one, you, you get to you have to weigh your like your calf, your thigh, your upper arm, your chest, your waist, all that kind of stuff. You because you, you have to take measurements every, I think it's every four weeks. Um, so you count calories on an app. It's my fitness pal is the name of the app. And uh you count calories, you know, every time you eat something, you obviously type it in. Now I was given the the high number of 2,800 calories a day. Because I found out off Martin that I wasn't eating enough, and that was my problem. So I I always think like you know that I was eating enough, and that I was like a voice full that was grand. But that that's not how you do it. Like he, you know, they reckon that most. And when I say they, I mean the general nutrition uh, nutritionist population reckon that people are under eating anyway. So I was given the two thousand eight hundred, and it, um, so I changed. I tried, like I started eating loads of fruit, you know, and I uh, um. As I've gone along, I think it's been six or seven weeks now. As I've gone along, I've started to kind of add things to it. I've I've, been, I've got my protein powder. I've never taken that. I I'm starting to take, but I never took it before. I should say. Um, creatine is another thing that I've had to take to, for for performance. Um, uh, you know, improvement or enhancement. Um, and then, you know, like adding loads of fruit and uh, not eating. I haven't been eating like chips or uh, I'm allowed because. What happened after the first 10 days into it, I stand up the scales and I've lost like almost three kg and I'm not supposed to be losing weight. So my calorie count went up to 3000. So again, Martin said, look, add in a chocolate bar a day or a cookie or whatever, like just, to, you know, to keep you going because it's there's no harm in that. It's to do with the amount of training I do. So if I'm like doing three sessions, three times a week and then running on top of that and then cycling on top of that, you know, it's a fair amount of calories I'm burning. So I had to increase it to 3000. Now that, that has been a chore and I've, um, I've added porridge into this situation. Um, and, and like to, I always thought like, I'm, I hate porridge. I'm not going to eat porridge and porridge is actually all right because I added, I hate honey. Well, I don't hate honey and I don't hate porridge. I just don't like them. So I just pour some honey into it now and mix it up because then it just sweetens it rather than just tasting like honey. And this morning, the first time I added some um, cinnamon in, which I, I actually really do like cinnamon. So that was added in as well. So there's all sorts of flavors in it now and it's actually quite nice to eat. And it's very warming. Like that's, I know it's not particularly cold yet. I'm recording this in the 25th, so I'm a bit ahead of schedule, but it's not particularly cold yet, but it's uh it's very warming on the stomach and uh, it's quite, yeah, it's quite nice and quite soothing. So, and filling, I will say that as well. So I've been, I've been doing that and bringing, bringing uh, like boiled eggs and uh, fruit and nuts into the gym. Cause if I'm there all day, like I'll have, I'll have them ready to go for in the fridge. So it's had to change things up in my, the way I prepare food as well. And, you know, eating lots of veg and, you know, I do, I think I've started to feel better for it. You know, um, I was trying to mix up my, um my routine as well like because it was like I'll, I'll eat the same di- uh, the same food every day all day every day but the problem was i was eating a lot of sweets so i do have a sweet too i've always had a sweet too now so th- we'll just get that out there straight away now this is what i found fascinating about what i learned over the, la- the last few days so john brought me in on s- uh, saturday just gone and uh, to do a, a, a hypnotherapy session and he said like he asked me at the start we were talking about like you know, uh, the medication I'm on and, you know, all that kind of, he needs to take all that information. So he asked me like, what can I do for you? So, so I was like, well, I'm not like trying to lose weight, but I want to, you know, enhance my performance and like, you know, feel better, not just feel so sluggish and stuff some days, you know? Um, so we like, obviously by eating better, that's going to help. But so he, he was asking me about that. And he said, the, I said, the one thing I have a problem with is, is kind of, a binging on sweet stuff like i'll eat like like and i know a lot of people say this but i'll happily eat like a packet of biscuits in one sitting with some tea or you know my mom buys me these snicker bars when she's done i eat four of them no problem sitting there i'll eat like sweets till i feel kind of sick you know that and and i'd still go like until i thought right i will get sick if i don't stop eating it and that's kind of a concern as well because you know if you've got time on your hands like if i'm in the gym on a monday i do all my training in the morning and and then kind of like bits and pieces of maybe the odd coaching session, the women's session, the women's jujitsu class and stuff in the evening. So there's no point in going home in between. It's only two hours. And I'll eat like loads of sweets in there because I'm just sitting around reading or, or you know, watching stuff on YouTube or whatever I do. So I mentioned this to John and he was like, well, you know, this is a lot of do, to do with, with what you're taking, you know, your medication here. Now, this is something I never heard. I've been on this medication for like, 
13 years right and and before that it was even on some medication before that and nobody's ever said to me that because of some of the medication i take the the it increases the obviously it's supposed to increase the serotonin level and the serotonin the extra serotonin serotonin it make the response to that is that i crave carbs so i want to, i want carbohydrates and i want them quick if you add that to the sweet too, the easiest way to get carbs is eat loads of chocolate or eat, you know, sweets or whatever you want to call them, right? Candy. I don't know. But that's what I was doing. And I, like I said, that was kind of a shock to me. So I thought, um, or John kind of continued on. It's not that I thought, I didn't ask him any questions. He was talking and it was, I was listening. But he said that the way to kind of counteract that would be to eat uh full natural fats like you know so like myself and Anne like if you don't know Anne pops up regularly she's my um uh, landlady slash housemaid slash friend uh, me myself and her we we buy milk like and we share the milk like we'll die, buy food for ourselves we share the milk and it's low fat and sometimes I get like low fat flora and like and I shouldn't be doing that like I should be full fat milk full fat um yogurt uh I should be eating cheese uh, peanut butter, which I have bought on, I've been having it on toast, and I'm not the biggest fan, but it's very good for calories. So I've been getting that into me to increase the calories, and also it's full fat stuff. So all this stuff he said that you should be eating. So he said, like, kind of try that out, see how it works, um, see how it responds to you know your sweet tooth, but don't, uh, or not your sweet tooth, your cravings for for carbs, but like don't cut out, like Martin said, don't cut out the. Uh, the sugar and stuff, because also at the time, like Martin made this point after I told him what John told me, he made the point that it's also the fact that I wasn't eating enough, like that I was craving this stuff. Like, so it's not just the medication. It's also the fact like I wouldn't I'd say if I was eating 2000 calories, like I'd be, I'd be demanding my body be demanding more calories. And again, we're dipping into like sweet stuff and biscuits. I love biscuits. um, And that's what we happened. So again, you know, this is, this was all news to me. Um, so that I took that kind of information away and, you know, the day before that Martin had measured, done the measurements again and like it lost four, four inches around the, was it four inches or four centimeters? Anyway, around the waist, but my, like my chest, sorry, around my chest, um, I, my legs were a bit smaller, which we need to work on, but my arms were and shoulders were a bit bigger. My neck had increased by half an inch or whatever it was. So already seeing the changes in the body without you know uh, like i will say this though this <laughs> this is another problem so i lost like the first uh 10 days i lost three kg and then the next time i weighed myself it was 0.3 so we're like oh that's not good enough like we have to we'll have to go up again so that went to three thousand. last week it was 0.2 i lost so now we're like right we're gonna have to go maybe see next week i might have to go up to 3200 calories it was like i'll just eat a jar of peanut butter but you know it's it is hard hitting that number, um, especially when you're like, you know, if somebody's working and stuff and they're not around, like, or if I'm in the gym and I'm doing all that training and stuff, I don't have the, the um, we don't have an oven in there, like, you know, so we got to kind of go off what I can bring in and what I can get around the corner and save you fair and that kind of stuff. So it's not as easy when you're doing it, uh, when you're adding kind of stuff in that you have to do of your, of your every day. But also sometimes you're like, God, I've only... You're it's the end. It's the evening, and you've eaten two thousand five hundred calories, and you're going. Oh, I said I have seven hundred to go. You know, and you you're trying to pile it into because I I don't want to keep losing weight. That's the point. I I don't want to lose any weight, even though they're tiny. Point two is tiny. If it was point two every week, it eventually start to you know. So I want to, you know, I'm not trying to bulk. I'm not trying to lose weight. I just want to train better and feel better when I train. So it's finding a happy medium, and and it, but it's been fascinating to kind of get to the the point of. Of seeing that, you know, and 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 getting this information of, you know, Martin and and John and obviously my friend Josh, he knows his, he knows his things, and I've been annoying him since I got the protein. I was like, so, to how many protein t teaspoons should I put in, and like, what do you put it in, and kind of he's had to answer all those questions as well. So it's a, ah, I'm annoying everyone, but um, I'll get there. But I did get a protein. It's it's green. Uh, is a maca or matcha? Uh, latte and. The reason I got that because uh, Marta, Josh's wife, um, made us like this little dessert when I was down there last week or the week before. And um, that's what the taste was, was coffee. Because I don't drink coffee, but I do like the taste. And uh, that's what I got. So I've been putting that in two scoops of that in porridge. And then at the end of the evening, 
to make up for the other three, uh, you know, teaspoons that I have to use, I just put a glass of milk and I just stir it. Now, most people put it in a in a blender and, and it's all smooth and stuff. But mine has, like, got lumps of protein in it. But, like, it's all going in anyway, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll perfect it at some point, but it's 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 early days. Uh, But I, I'm... I think I am feeling a bit better with regards to in training and stuff. And, um, you know, I'm not the people who know me in there know that I'm not one of these people that are trying to hit personal bests all the time anyway. But I just wanted to I've got like a good cardio. Um, uh, I've got good cardio with regards to running and on the bike and some rowing. And I feel like I, I'll do I'll always do well with that. But it was a lot to do with strength, and I think, well, like my upper body strength is terrible, uh, even though I've been doing CrossFit for ages. But, um, but I wanted to feel better doing that, and I wanted to feel better when I'm in jujitsu as well. And it's it's better for the mind too, not just eating all that, you know, sugar and uh, and that. I don't want to be, I never want to feel like I do if I, you know, like I drink a cup of coffee or something. That you know, if you if you eat too much sugar, that's how you feel anyway, and you feel like you get a headache and all that. And I don't really want to feel that. And I want to still be able to eat sweet stuff. But the mindset of of what John was talking about is more important to me to to kind of learn that I need to why I shouldn't do this for myself. So just have to keep going. Um, today's my my rest day, so I will be very much taking that rest. And uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not too bad at that, like at at the rest days kind of thing, but. Yeah, another thing I wanted to bring up because it was this I I brought this up uh in the last one uh last solo one about starting like the Patreon buy me a coffee whatever people call it like and people have come up to me in the gym like about it and said that I should do it because you know first of all you put I am putting effort into the podcast to get good guests and I I do like everybody is coming on recently has, has written a book so it's, <laughs> and that's my choice because I do I do like that kind of thing but um, they've written a book, so I, I have to read the book. I have to pay for that and all that, you know. And I don't have, uh, don't make that much money, you know. So, um, they said I should do it because I'm not like telling people to do it. I'm, it, it's, it's out there if people want to do it. And look, that's that is kind of a point that I needed to be told to me. Strangely enough, that I couldn't figure that out myself, but I didn't want to feel like I was putting pressure on people because uh, on people to pay pay any money or, or give me like a couple of euro a month or whatever because uh, it, it's not really about that but it's just about being able to afford these books that I'm buying and uh, uh, it's it's not really about anything else like what else am I going to you know the people that listen to this podcast and the people who know me know that I'm not going to go mad on spending it or anything like you know the, what do I ever uh, really do um, outside of train and uh watch films <laughs> that's about that's about it that's about all i do is train and watch films but yeah uh, look at some point i am still like kind of skeptical about it i will do it look i i i've said i do it now so i i am going to do it and i will set it up or i'll ask john to set it up for me but i'm going to take on your advice um when it comes out or when we sort it out i'll put a message out there and say look i will make this point that i am still a little embarrassed by it and i i do not expect people to give us any donations of any kind uh but you know we'd be humbled by any uh, any kind of made or put in or whatever way you do it i don't even know how you do it to be honest um so yeah and i like so that's it on that, though, and I hope that's. I hope you can understand. That. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but now we've we've reversed that uh, idea. And uh, thanks to the people who contacted me or talked to me, like Sinead or Joanne, um, who said that it's a good idea, and I work hard. And sometimes, you know, I'm my mom. Um, you know that I work hard doing this podcast. Uh, you know, once a week. So why not put it out there? And if people were, people enjoy it as well. You know, and that that's the whole thing. And it look, people enjoy it for free. That's the, that was the point of it anyway. So I'm not. That's that's what I mean. Anyway, I'm talking about too much. And this is what the problem is. I'm still questioning the the decision, even though I've made the decision. So that's welcome to my head. But yeah, um, I can't really say who's coming on next week. I don't really like saying that because in case I've I jinx it. Because I did it there a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, what if they don't? Come on now. It's always this kind of idea. But I've mentioned already that it's a writer. But I haven't put the name out 
so, but I'm very excited about this person coming on if it is if they do come on and uh, look as always like if you've had anybody and people have suggested people and there's some people who haven't I've said who come on and I get them on and I've said to them I get on but it hasn't been the right fit and that's not on them you know that's more on me and not being able to maybe write a, a, an episode around that uh, subject matter that they that they're going to talk about and it's that's just that's my problem it's my fault for not being able to do that um, I can do it, uh, you know, I can barely squeak out an episode at the best of times, so sometimes I don't. So, But if people have an idea or a suggestion of someone they want to put on or someone that would benefit from it, and like I said, it's always to do, like, it's not all about mental health. Uh, mental health is so important to me, and look, we talk about it every week. Uh, we squeeze it in there uh, whenever we can, and it's the most important thing, and it's the reason we have the podcast going. But the, the guests don't have to be um, coming on to talk about mental health. I think that scares some people away, too, that they feel... I have nothing to offer on the subject. Well, a lot of time I'm contacting them over the subject that they are, you know, in the know of. And uh, just so I can learn. Sometimes I'm very selfish with regards to the guests as well. Like, it's just like, I really want to chat to this person and I want to find out what this is all about. Uh, I wonder, will they come on? I'll contact them. And, you know, a poor old John, I don't give, even give him a shout half the time about the people coming on because... Well, he doesn't care. He's, you know, he knows he he's he trusts me just as I have to trust him and the tech. He has to trust me when it comes to picking people to come on the podcast. But um, so I've been watching like a lot of uh, a lot of horror films recently, um, because I do when it comes to uh October. It's just a month that I really enjoy watching them. Um, we talked about it last week with Lisa, some of my favorites and stuff, and. Uh, covering sometimes covering old ground and watching the same ones over and over because uh, it was funny. Lisa brought up Halloween last week, which is my favorite horror film, but she also brought up uh, Trick or Treat, which is a you know maybe 10 15 years old, but it's a film I absolutely love. Like, and it's it's really like I said last week, Urban Legends, and uh, it's it's like obviously it's silly in places, but sometimes it is quite freaky in places. And you know, I put it out there on uh, on um. I don't know if it's Facebook or Instagram. No, it would have been Facebook about asking was Deliverance a horror film? Because I was looking at, I was trying to look at like what could be a horror films to different people. Now, some people said it's about, I remember Collie uh, re responded to it. Collie Ennis, who's been on here, responded at, at, and said it was, it's a horrific experience film. And and that's really what it is. Like the the experiences within the film are horrific. So, but I guess it'd be horror films to some, and, and some films are horror films to, you know, like something like Panic Room for Pop It to My Head. People would see that as a horror film because of the situation that they can, some people have better imaginations, they can put themselves in that situation. And I I wouldn't call it a horror film, I'd call it kind of more of a thriller, but there's all films that you can call horror if, if from your past experiences might prompt it to be more, you know, horrifying than, than other people's experiences. But I am... Um, and I would have that with with certain ones as well. I would think I think Deliverance is a horror film, to be honest. Um, even people would say it was a thriller or whatever. But I suppose there's a fine line between thriller and horror. But um, yeah. So I've been watching a lot of that, and uh, I've been uh, I'm still reading. I because I've had the i the the pat the guest um Lisa was on last week. Uh, so I was I was reading her uh, book about the history of seances, and then I had Fiona Scarlett the week before, and I was reading her book, Boys Don't Cry. And like this guest is coming on next week. I've been reading a couple of books by them. I I'm still trying to get through the ones the one and it's a fascinating book about the ten uh, uh drugs that changed our minds, and it's about like you know um SSRIs uh, uh lithium um going going right back to the present day of like um placebos um and you know even even uh, psychedelic drugs with regards to how we treat mental illness and and the, how they're using it now in the states in particular but they're trying to kind of expand it like microdosing people with um with uh you know the same thing that response that you get from ma magic mushrooms or, or or actually lsd in, in general so uh, you know i'm i'm getting through that but i'm i've had to put it down you know for large chunks at a time for a few days at a time unfortunately to get through books to be fair, that have been absolutely brilliant anyway. So I, I'm, I'm, and I've got two stacks of books waiting to be read as well. And they're kind of, it's like when people have money in their pocket, it's burning a hole in their pocket. That's what books are like to me. They just like burn a hole in my, in my mind or something that I just can't, I, I really can't wait to read these books that I have there. But it just so happened I've had a run of guests that have just written books and which is incredible in itself. But um, like I said, look, if you have any 
it's something I don't really mention a lot on the podcast, but if you like wanted to contact us and had any response to this episode, like I said about dating apps or any s- silly stories or whatever, like I said, it'd be all anonymous. We wouldn't be giving you out your name or anything unless you wanted us to. Um, and even if you have information on, on what I talked about with regards to nutrition plans and dieting and stuff and how, you know, how the science works like that, like John was saying about the, the um my uh, medication making me crave uh carbohydrates so yeah like th- all that is welcome and i just don't i don't say it enough um and i do get responses and especially the last couple of episodes we've had some brilliant responses from some amazing people who have been supporting the podcast since the start or since they first heard of it or they first appeared on it and uh you know since then um and i've approached a, for- a former guest about coming on again and maybe doing it in the uh in the room here so like we could like we had with josh there a few episodes back well a good few episodes back a one-to-one in the room because this guest is uh is fascinating and has had a bit of a career change since the last time we spoke um and they they live nearby and it would be cool to get them in and because i want to get them as much as i can as well if we can have people into the room i think it's a little bit more well obviously it's more intimate with two people but there's something more open about it like the screen will always be a divider or you know it's hard to get right in there uh you know with an interview and with a conversation so but for now you've been wonderful for listening i want to thank john as always uh for his technical wizardry uh i want to thank my mom my dad my granddad and also jaron calvin subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't done so already even if you don't watch youtube that much just go into the weekly weekly and hit uh subscribe on it you're only going to get one um notification a week turn off notifications and you won't you know you won't get any bings on your on your device um but it helps the podcast uh, grow that little bit more we're on instagram facebook or twitter follow us there um for the podcast platforms we're on spotify apple anchor google podcasts etc um thank you everyone for your patience for allowing me to have a solo episode that you listen to to this point uh and we'll be back next week with another guest, another wonderful guest. Um, they all are, you know. Anyway, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next week. Bye.